let's talk about some of this uh, this environmental disaster stuff we got going on. So, you know, okay. obviously we, we've been talking about um, what you can invest in, the cost mm -hmm. of lumber, the cost of food, the inflation. Right now in California, they're dealing with a mega drought. Uh, the Verge reports the Hoover Dam Reservoir is at an all-time low. Mm. And apparently they're putting, in, in California, they're under some kind of uh, rationing for water. Wow. Yeah, the water, man. How's it's, it work? I, I, I'm going to be careful with how I put this so I don't present myself as a water expert. But my reporting... On uh, Congressman Devin Nunes, he's in Central California, and you know he represents a big ag district, uh, 22nd district in uh, in California, and he was originally elected to fight the water wars, and so I know a little bit about the Central uh, the Central Valley water issues, and one of the cases these guys make, and it's pretty convincing to me, is there's an awful lot of water coming off the Sierra Nevada. Uh, and this is what makes the Central Valley so fertile, so rich, what they, they call the uh, breadbasket of the solar system. Some of this, the water wars, what the water wars are about, it's about environmentalists or people who describe themselves as environmentalists in the Bay Area to a lesser extent, Los Angeles. And a lot of this, in effect, what they're doing, again, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what's happening at the Hoover Dam. I just want to give a little background on what I know about the water wars out in California. They say there's an awful lot of water in California. What they're trying to do is they're trying to break, they're trying to break their political opponents. The game is with the left, what they're trying to do is they're trying to hurt their economic base, strip them of their economic base in the Central Valley, the agricultural base, and also push them into the cities where they can control them. So uh, again, oh, so, but, but by what? By, by blocking water or what? Yeah, they run a lot of the water off into the bay, and it's an argument about the uh, the smelts and what people say about the smelts is like this, you know, n n nothing against the smelts, the but delta the sm smelt. yeah, the Boops, delta scoops. smelts, yes, right? So you know about fish. you know about yes. this, right? <laughs> so the delta smelts are also a bait fish for I believe it's a trout that's an imported fish, right? Yeah. The, the trout they brought the trout out there, it's an imported fish, and and the smelts. Uh, the smelts are eaten by the trout. So th what their point is, is that the environmentalist argument isn't very, uh, it doesn't have a lot of integrity. So it's not entirely honest. This is, a uh, uh, in, in my uh, research, when I covered the, the last drought in the past, uh -huh. you know, six, seven, six or so years, I would say that you're about half, like what, what you're saying is about half of, uh, uh, what's, what's the right way to put this? In my research, it half agrees with what hmm. you're saying. Um, okay. In places like Tulare County, they're barred from using surface water for, for uh, growing crops right. because it's diverted to the cities. And it's a really simple thing. It's one of the biggest arguments I have for the Electoral College. You have this one state with no electoral system, no, no proportional representation. What happens is the farmers in these counties make up about 300,000 people, but a large portion of the economy. Over in San Diego and LA, they have tens of millions of people. So then they all say, hey, we're going to vote on who gets the water from the poor yeah, people. Yeah, right. yeah. And so when you get 300,000 farmers and poor people, and then you get tens, tens of millions of city people, right. and they say, now nah, everybody vote. <laughs> yeah, well, right. that's what uh, Ben Franklin said. A, a well-armed hmm. uh, 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 a dem democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for lunch. <laughs> a republic is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. Uh, it's funny. So, so what, <laughs> what we end up seeing is the farmers had to drill thousands uh. upon thousands of feet into the earth for groundwater. But the poor people who lived in um, East, East Porterville, I think it was called, mm -hmm. their, their wells only went 30 feet, so they went dry. They had no water left in their homes, taken by the farmers because the farmers were in a drought and there were canals with surface huh. water. And I said, there's so much water there, can't you take it? And they were like, we're, it's not, we're not legally allowed to. It's diverted right. to cities. So the water runoff from the mountains at a time of a drought goes to the cities who say they need right. it more. But I will, I will mention one thing as for the, for the Delta. Cause, so uh, I, went, I went to the Bay Area and uh, we, we talked to many people about the, the smelts mm -hmm. and what the farmers wanted to do was they said, we got a lot of this water up north that goes into the bay and does nothing. Right. It reaches the, 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 you know, San Francisco around that area where it hits the ocean and it basically makes all that fresh water useless. We should divert that fresh water, have it go around the bay and go to the farms. Now, the political mm -hmm. argument was the smelt. Oh, but you're going to kill all these fish if you do that. Yeah. I think the more sound argument was we actually I actually went to a bunch of cities in the Bay Area. 
on smaller cities, not San Francisco, not Oakland. And I, I went to a bunch of farms. One of the farms I went to was, uh, I believe it was an apple farm. I could be wrong. I did some kind of fruit. And they said, the water that we get for this farm mm. is, it's Bay Area water. So we're, we got all these, you know, tributaries, streams, and whatever. It's all the Delta water. If you divert that water, it will reduce pressure, causing ocean water to come in, huh. killing all of the fresh water in the Bay and wiping out all the small towns that rely on that water. So it may be that you could, you know, the needs nah, of the many outweigh the needs yeah. of the few. But they were like, what about our family farm that's been here for generations right. for hundreds of years that would be destroyed by salt water coming in and wiping out our farms? It's tough. One of the solutions for the water problem was desalination. Uh, desalination. But what that does is it creates brine runoff that goes down to the bottom of the ocean bed, killing off the lower, lowest level of life, huh. causing a dead zone from the ground up when you wipe out the food chain. Yeah, you need to find a way yeah. to reuse that salt if you're going to do that for sure. Yeah, they, but they just dump it back into the ocean. Huh. And it's, it's, it's brine. It sinks and then kills all oh, the, yeah. all the you know, flora and fauna on the ocean floor. And then everything above it dies. Um, this hmm. is a bit goes back to this guy named William Mulholland. You guys ever hear of this guy? Oh, yeah. They named a street <laughs> after him in yeah, uh, Mulholland yeah. Drive in, yeah. in Los Angeles. He was, it's 1913, the year. Uh, it's the same year they made the Federal Reserve. The basis of Chinatown. Oh, it, William Mulholland? Yeah. So what he did was he went up to this place, uh, uh, Owens River, the mm -hmm. River Valley, and, and diverted all this. This is before L.A. existed. It was a desert. And he diverted all this farmland water down south to create the city. And that's why they named a street after him yeah. in L.A. They're built on a desert. It's not supposed yeah. to be there. They're importing <laughs> yeah. the water and stripping it from the rest of the state. If so Colorado, when drugs hit, they hit hard. Uh, if Colorado right now was like, hey, California, no. California's gone. So, yeah, SoCal's right. gone. Their water's gone. It's Colorado River water. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, Colorado's I got like a this. treaty or something. But they could just be like, nah. If, if a, imagine if a drought hit Colorado, <laughs> though. If Colorado, for some reason, was if. facing, you know, w w did it happen? Yeah, it happens all the time. It oh, there you really go. Quite yeah. regularly. And then Colorado's like, sorry, we, we, you know, Colorado first, no water for you, California. China's doing that. They're like blocking uh, river water to other countries because a lot of rivers run off the mount Chinese mountains, I think. Like they did India. it to themselves during the Olympics, you know, several years ago. So all what, the poor what, farmers were restricted. What's going to happen in California then? What's going to happen in uh yeah, what's going to happen in Southern California? Well, I mean, California as it stands seems to be post-apocalyptic. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I, I hear from these people. They're like, California is so nice. I'm sick and tired of people having zero perspective. It's like, bro, if you are a frog in a pot, I don't want to hear your opinion. I'm, I'm kidding. You know, we'll have an argument about it. But you need to, like, look at the pots that are boiling because you're in California and people are like, it's not so bad here. And I'm like, how many times have you seen like a homeless person take a dump uh, in the street? Twelve in the past <laughs> month. But what's the big deal? And I'm like, it should be zero. <laughs> when I lived there, it was like one or tw once or twice a month. San Francisco's got a poop patrol now. I, the last time I went to L.A., I parked my car and I was going to a mall and some woman, some, some old fat woman walked in the middle of the street and just squatted and went at it. And I'm like, what the f is happening to this place? Uh, that's burned in my mind. I lived I, there. I yeah, yeah. I lived there a couple of years, and it was kind of bad. Now it's really, really Wait, you bad. you lived in San Francisco or you lived in LA? No, no, no. I live in LA. LA. Okay. In LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been to San Francisco several I, I, times. I, I, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a great city. Beautiful. These were all great American cities until someone decided they needed to be burned down. Well, or a whole bunch of people decided they need to be destroyed. It's, it's, I think it's really simple. It's a very simple mathematic equation. If Republican says, be responsible, and Democrat says, I'll give you free stuff, yeah. it's a very, it's a slope. It is an uphill and a downhill. And like Homer Simpson, Springfield has a westward slope, so they <laughs> yeah. knew which direction he was going to walk. Right. It's so sad. Right. It's, a, it's a great, they're great cities in a great state, in a great country that is, Were. yeah, it's drastically behind schedule on developing desalination tactics. We have so much fresh water. We have so much salt water, access to so much salt water being on a, basically an island, you know, North America, United States. It's not a long-term solution. And, <sighs> Desalination? And, yeah, and groundwater isn't either because th th there's, um, what is it called? Um, subsidation? I think the word is, I could be wrong. Uh, could you look, look that up? Yeah. When you pull the groundwater out, that huh. water actually provides some kind of structural support, pressure oh, at a lower level. It subsides, yeah. Right. That's got to be the word. Subsidization. Subsidization. Yeah. Subsidization. Oh, no, that's not it. That's yeah. not it. <laughs> no, that's subsidies. Yeah. Uh, subsidation. I could, it could be wrong. But uh, what happens is when you pull the water out, the ground starts sinking, and that is really bad. So I think— So that's the future for California. Oh, yeah. Uh. 
I think I think California is going to get really bad. Maybe what they're trying to do with this great reset stuff with like New York is get rid of as many people as possible so the cities can survive. I hear people also saying that they want to build these uh, again speculation from interested friends. They say yeah, they want to build these kind of fancy uh, big Asian style cities, these kind of showcase cities where you don't really have many people living in them. Yeah. I couldn't uh, find subsidence, subsidence, yeah, but maybe no. super, subsidence? someone could super yeah, chat it. It's called yeah. subsidence. Yeah. Cool. Called, there you go. Yeah. So like what the groundwater is like is, is a buffer for other to, to keep other things from well, when to you keep what, the land up when, and to keep up salt water out when they pull the water out of the ground, it doesn't matter where you are. Like the ground, like the they, the ground goes down. Caves in, yeah. Well, you know, with fracking, a lot of the fracking stuff is causing earthquakes across the, the yeah. country, and I think it's because they're removing liquid from the, similar to this maybe, and it's causing the the ground to like fall and shake. So I was thinking we could pump water back into the earth to like make up for the oil that we take out and to re resubsidize or whatever you would call subsidize. Uh, resubsidize. People need to drink water, man. Res- maybe maybe this look this is this is all the great reset people they're like we're drinking too much water we're pulling too much are they saying that too are you kidding me they're saying I'm, we're drinking too much water oh yeah the, the, the reason they want to ban beef is how much water we have to use to, 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 for the cows to drink that's insane I oh, thought you know, was, almonds I thought it was just water. I thought it was, I thought it was just their their whole thing about, uh, about oh it's uh, all climate change bo- bovine flatulence yes. I didn't know it had anything to do <laughs> yeah, with, it's, with it's, water as well it's like thousands of gallons they say of water per cow for like a meat product and it's wasteful almonds mm. almonds take a lot of water to produce so it's very it's like huh. we're, we're gonna see almond prices start skyrocketing because of the drought in california it's gonna wow. be bad uh, avocados as well california produces what like a th- how much of the, of the food yeah. of the world like a massive I say portion like one fifth yeah, it's, it's wow. yeah something like that yeah and, and, and california is being propped up by farmers who are producing for their gdp and if they leave then the state is they're in trouble. Right. Have they turned it into wind farms? Then I guess we will be eating bugs pretty soon. That's why uh, I, as well as many other people like Jack Basobic, have been saying, get out of cities. You don't want to be in a city. I mean, they, it, it's almost like they fired a shot across the bow last year with the lockdowns and the riots. Get out of the cities. They were, they were basically forcing you to do it. Oh, ab- absolutely. Lot. Right. I, I mean, it's a, if, you have a, if you have the ability to not leave these places that are increasingly dangerous and increasingly spiritually uh, bleak, yeah, you, you have to go. There's no choice. We, we were in the Philadelphia suburbs, mm. and we decided to leave almost immediately when the pandemic happened. So we actually had a conversation about there was, there was talks about quarantining states. No oh, joke. Yeah. They were like yeah. shutting down bridges right away, that. too. That yeah. And so we awful. were like, why almost immediately? What did you guys see right away that made you us? I mean, no, no, no. Huh. It, was, it was the state came oh, out and oh, said, oh, we will okay. lock down the bridges and quarantine we the state. Oh, it co- OK. It coincided yeah. with expanding the business, too. So I had uh-huh. been thinking about just getting a larger. We were going to buy Tim was going to buy like a big office in Jersey, but obviously COVID struck and, and that was kind of off the table. It was already you were finding challenges with that. Yeah, no, it, everything everything shut down. Wow. It just made okay. it possible to do anything. And so we ended up just sitting inside and doing this show and one iteration of huh. it for months because you couldn't do anything. And so I was just like, one of, one of the problems we had was you go to you go to Walmart, nothing there. It, it was like we mm. go to the store and there's like, a, there's like a photo on my Instagram of my friend Adam and it's just like there's no toilet paper it's anywhere. so weird. Whoa. Just all gone. I'm, I'm not, I mean, weirdly, I'm not a... a it's an old it's an old thing in American history, right? I mean, kind of our resources are our myths about uh, Cincinnati, the citizen farmer who comes and fights yeah, for his land. Yeah, he was land. great, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it is also uh, it is also about that's our origins. These are the stories that we tell about America, and right the city from the Bible on, from the Bible of the, from the Bible of the present, it's always been a place of crime and corruption and pestilence. And that's what it is again. I think that um, Americans need to reconnect to our roots and to reconnect to things that aren't about politics, whether it's family and community. Yes. You know what? All that right? sounds like an argument for the Great Reset. But I, but I would, I would reset it entirely differently. Right. right you know right. what I'm saying? I'm not talking about resetting. I'm saying people having Americans having individual choice and making a decision. I think um, people need to get out of cities. They should roll up their sleeves, learn how to chop some wood, learn how to grow their own food, take care of some chickens, mm. get some f- you know, fresh eggs. Nothing beats. You walk out in the yard in the morning, you eat a couple fresh eggs, you make them and right there on the spot. And it's like, thank you, chickens. It's delicious. Not these garbage <laughs> yeah, store-bought yeah, yeah. trash. 
but but people are so reliant. I mean, the people in the cities, I think, are the biggest problem. The the rural conservatives aren't the ones destroying the planet. The the, the it's the these urban liberals are the ones who com- right. they, they complain about everything they vote for. They vote for these 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 governors. They mm-hmm. vote for these mayors who create the pre- police brutality. They vote for these conditions. They live in these hyper concentrated break mm. particle dust in the air with gas and and all the yeah. exhaust. They're breathing in trash. They're living in cities that smell like sour milks, sour milk and cubicles cr- crowned on top of each other. They're the ones consuming the most energy for this, this this gluttonous lifestyle on average. And then the people in the countryside who are voting Republican live, you know, sparsely yeah. populated areas where they're on like natural, you know, like they have their own oil tank to manage their own heat. They have, you know, satellite Internet, right. much more lower cost They're doing solar panels, much more self-reliant. I, I, I always imagine that they knew this, though, that it's not a lot of the times we think about it in terms of hypocrisy. I, I think that actually that's part of how they're establishing um, their elite status, right? When we saw Gavin Newsom walking around all the time without his mask, and there were a whole bunch of them, right? There, Whitmer as well. Uh, Pelosi. Pelosi, who was the, the, the mayor of uh, Philadelphia, right? He was also caught, I think, in New Jersey or somewhere without his mask. At a certain Fauci point, was caught with his mask down. Exactly, Fauci. So at yeah. a certain point, it's like they're not all making a blunder. They know they're political figures they're being looked at. It was part of to establish that they are part of a higher class, right? It's a hierarchy. They're at the top. You are on the bottom. So when you talk about the difference between the people who are the elites who are in cities and the the people who are on farms, that's the point to say we're better than you. We can we can spend this. It's like the celebrities who who fly on private jets to go pick up yeah. their awards for environmentalism. They want you to suffer so they right. can keep living in luxury. They mean to show you. They want to rub it in your face. It's not like. What hypocrites, Leonardo DiCaprio. It's like, I know what I'm doing. So, so what you're yeah. saying is eat the rich? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. Solon would tell us otherwise. That's called, yeah. a, that's called the Kathy Newman. That was her name, right? Yeah. The girl yes. that so, I so what you're saying Solon is. Solon would say yeah. otherwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah apparently it's, we're going to come to a head where people are going to want, you look at the French Revolution, people are going to want to hurt other people because of greed or because of um, jealousy, but we don't. You know, we stay peaceful. We work together as a team. We all want to come out of this better and benefit. Together right. we can. I got I got my issues with Elon Musk. You know, the Bitcoin, mm-hmm. Dogecoin, the pumping yeah. and dumping, all that silly, silly nonsense. I can respect him for SpaceX and Starlink. We're like trying to get Starlink. Mm-hmm. We actually got someone brought out a Starlink for us, but they're cell locked, so it didn't work. We need an actual regional unit, so we weren't able to do it, mm-hmm. but it would be really awesome to have. I guess we'll just have to wait until we get it. Uh, so, so that's cool. Like, work on cool stuff. I'll tell you who, you know, when I think about the phrase eat the rich, I don't know really know what they mean by that, like consume the resources from them. You want to throw in Hollywood? I'll tell you this, leftists, <laughs> hear me out. Let's start by eating the rich in Hollywood. Yes. And we all agree. And we, we'll start there. We'll start there. We'll probably have to compromise after that, but I think that's a good place to, to go. Cause it, you know, start. you're talking about like we, the rich chocolate cake. Yeah. What were you gonna say? I'm saying, like, if, 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 you know, I look at Wall Street and I look at Hollywood, and those are two things where I'm like, for the most part, I'm not, you, you can go. The hedge funds that are shorting companies into oblivion, these, these, these apes in the, in the meme stocks, it's a revolution. It's fantastic. They're basic, they, yeah. found, they found the weakness, these shorts, and they found a way to stick it to the hedge funds. Hopefully it works out. We'll see what's happening. A lot of people have been covering this, and I'm excited to see it work out. Hollywood, these are the hypocrites who say, we're going to save the planet. Don't, uh, uh, you, you know, stop flying in planes. Oh, my private jet's here. I got to go. And they go live in their, their 50-bedroom mansion. Those are two sectors of the economy. I got no problem with uh, regulating out of existence or just, you know, figuratively eating the rich. I, I, I find it heartbreaking. I mean, we Wait, all... the tech sector, too. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, right. bye. Uh, okay. yeah. I, I find the Hollywood stuff heartbreaking, though. I mean, because before, right before COVID-19... We used to go to movie theaters. Remember that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. You that's why get, I like AMC stock. Yeah, okay. That's that's in, that's great. We I used can't to wait. go to movie theaters, go to dinner beforehand, get a drink after, sit with your uh, you know, sit with your beloved, uh, go with a group of friends, yeah. children's birthday party, and now it's heartbreaking. Now when they turn the lights back on in Hollywood, you've got one of these you've got some lunatic screaming at you for being uh, for being white. Right, exactly. White male. It, it's ridiculous. And look there's still a lot of terrific stuff they're doing, but there's a lot of garbage they're doing as well. But do you notice the people that don't say anything? 
the people who are never out front on the political stuff, how they come across. No one ever knows. No one knows what Al Pacino thinks about politics. Right. Right. You, you, you know, now that I think about it, I'm like, is there is there a certain sector of ultra wealthy individuals that we're actually eager to defend anyway? Like I can I can I can defend Elon on some things. <laughs> Is there a sector? I got no Let respect for Bezos. That dude is nuking everything. everything. He's burning it to the ground. He's a he's a lunatic. The, the like, and I'm talking about Amazon. So Amazon's cool. book burning. Yeah. I'm like, these people got too much power. Zuckerberg's awful. Jack Dorsey's yeah. awful. They're all just so awful. You know what? I'm over it. Let's set a threshold and get rid of, you know, we'll, we'll eat the rich. I'm there. Leftist, you got me. I'm tired <laughs> of these people. They're just awful. They're destroying everything. It would be nice to be able to find one sector. I mean, you can't. I mean, entertainment. I got nothing. Where? But look, look, at like a lower level, you've got media uh, where they're not the multi-billion dollar media. You've got like, you've got wealthy conservatives who do media and it's all right. You got wealthy yeah. liberals, they do media, it's all right. But then you look at the big corporate machines. Bigger you Awful. Get, get out of here. Yeah. All of you are gone. Yeah. You look at, you look at technology. We got minds.com. Hey, Bill Ami, he's all right. He's a cool dude. You got BitChute. You got Gab. I'm okay with those things. And you got Facebook. Nah, get Facebook out of there. Too big. You know, too big. Too big. Too yeah, bad. It should be bad, about, awful. I think the tech should speak for itself. Mines is cool because it's open source, free software. Mm -hmm. So like it's, we spent all this time building it and now you can have it for free and use it. Now you can have your own mm -hmm. copy of it and spin up your own social network for free. Cost, it's all available. That kind of thing, yeah. It does. If the CEO turns out to be a multi-trillionaire, whatever, the technology is amazing. So here's the other problem. All right, if we, if we agree that there are a lot of really awful, really wealthy people that are screwing everything up, Zuckerberg right. dumping money in these elections, Bezos, uh, you know, he's doing the same thing with Amazon, wokeness, you know, pushing these ideologies. Then you've got, you know, big tech. The problem is what? You give their money to the government, now the government's the same thing. So do we eat the government figuratively? What does that mean? Maybe, no, maybe, hold on. Maybe there's like, a little portion of the left when they say eat the rich, and then the right when they say small government, and that's what you got to combine. Mm. I don't know how you do that. Decentralize. How, how does it, how, I don't what, know if you can. What does that look like? Bitcoin maybe. Decentralizing. Decentralizing, yeah. The tech sector is decentralizing. Like I was working with the Fediverse team. We're building out the Fediverse, mm. which is this like federated system of uh, free software technology where like all these different mm. websites can intercommunicate and it's a, it's a big deal. Um, I, I go more into it in a little while. Um, we're decentralizing the, the entertainment industry. Hollywood is gone. True, the giant. True. Now you can. We're doing this from here in the middle yeah. of you know the the mountains of right, West Virginia. So that's whatever. exciting. Yeah. Um, the tech sector. Maybe. Now with yeah. Bitcoin, the tech sector is decentralizing with the finance cryptocurrency finance. Uh, po politics is next. Um, I'm big into like apps that where we can vote locally with mm -hmm. app technology and kind of control our own destiny from lo local service local. guarantees citizenship. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know what service means, but I'm into it. Any let's, kind of service with community, that. anything. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to the idea that we move, not move away from politics, but that we expand. And I'm including, I'm not just saying people on the right, I'm just saying as Americans, we ex expand past politics. There's no redemption in politics. I, I guess, you know, one of the big problems, there's just these stubborn people that stand in the way of solving these problems. Maybe what we need is for like an entity of the people to rise up and huh. seize power, maybe mm. with weapons, and then instill their political ideology by force. Go I'm on. kidding. Yeah, yeah. I see you studied history. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That always works out. <laughs> right. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, Go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.